Thank you, Nigel. Uh, in fact, thank you to Fox Williams and the other sponsors of tonight's event. Uh, events where you have to reorganise the venue are usually as usually a good sign. And uh, certainly, looking at the crowd tonight, it's it's great to see uh, so much interest being uh, paid to this topic. Uh, but I'd like to talk tonight, uh, over the next 20 minutes or so, about about um, Californian losers, uh, about cricket, about warm beer, and about MacGuffins. Uh, so um, you'll need to sort of bear with me as I try and string those themes together. But I suppose the the Californians come in from um, the, the the relevance here is that is the quote which I think has been attributed to me on on some of the material you've got with you or that I've or I've always felt that it's uh, it would be no higher pleasure than building a business here that got to the stage that was taking over its American competitors rather than being on the receiving end of things and. To that end, I know there's a lot of sort of general generalised enthusiasm among some people in the room, for example, about wouldn't it be great if the next Facebook or Google or whatever was, was coming out of the UK? And I'm afraid that I don't believe that can happen. Or I certainly don't believe it's wise betting on it happening. Uh, I'm afraid I think that uh, if you're trying to beat uh, the Californians at their own game, you're going to lose. Uh, and so actually there are very few Californian. well there are actually many, many Californian losers, but the winners uh, in, the, in the pure tech space do tend to be Californian, by that I mean American, certainly West Coast, and I think that trying to replicate that here is 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 a mugs game. Uh, so I really I want to tackle more the wi a sort of more narrow question, which is how does one set up a business here uh, and make it successful, especially when that involves essentially pushing water uphill against the Californians if one isn't careful. Uh, I'm not going to dwell too much on why I think. Uh, the Californians win in straight fights, but you know it, it's a scale argument, it's a clustering argument. And I think if I were to sort of tell people in this room, for example, that there was an event a bit like this in California where a bunch of Californians were just were trying to figure out how to how to beat London at the game of being a global professional services and finance hub, uh, much as we all rate the Californians, I don't think we'd necessarily think rate their chances too highly. London has lots of innate advantages. Uh, in, in what it's good at, and California has the innate advantage in what it's good at. So I, I feel like trying to beat the Californians is, is a mugs game. What you're looking for is you're looking for something uh, which, makes, which makes you special. I suppose, was it John Major who said that cricket and warm beer made the UK special? I mean, I, I personally uh, don't, don't see those as the strongest aspects of the UK, but, but you are looking for something, uh, you're looking for a business uh, that can attack an opportunity where um, there's something different about its, its, its industry. And I think that the, um, in, my, in my, my first business came about, Fletcher Research was a research company uh, focusing on the internet, uh, came about because, um, or at least, the, or at least the, the strategy we followed, not, not initially, but soon afterwards, uh, which was to provide the UK corporate and, uh, market with research and analysis about the internet in the UK, came about because uh, organisations like the BBC or Lloyd's Bank or Kingfisher or British Telecom didn't want to, for their for their five-year projection to, to take an American projection and divide it by five and slide it right two years, which was which is what we were all doing at that point, and certainly back at McKinsey where I was. Uh, and they wanted to to get localised speci specialist knowledge because they saw the UK as a different market which would have different twists and turns. And and recognising that, we were able to actually build a business that focused on be being a a uh, UK-centric research uh, firm specialising in the internet, and we ended up um, quite quickly becoming the leader in that space, certainly measured in terms uh, by the, the t size of the analyst team that we devoted to it or the amount of data that we collected about it. And I, I certainly didn't know then what I know now, but I think looking back on it, that, uh, that whole pitch to our clients that was that the, the UK isn't just a uh, the 51st state of America and has a different set of... Uh, um, uh, customers, different set of companies, different set of uh, financial regulations, legal regulations, uh, was actually what enabled us to to build a business. And I think that the, uh, if you look, for example, at one of the three biggest technology businesses in the UK, Sage, uh, you you could see exactly that same dynamic going on. Sage is is capitalised on the fact that the accounting uh, si um, regulations and and practices uh, in the UK operate very differently from in the US, or at least they used to, and that has enabled them to defend themselves against uh, American software businesses because from an American software business point of view, localizing your accounting software for every country in the world is a very uh, unscalable activity. And that gives the op an opportunity to Sage in the UK or, or Pyramid in Scandinavia or so on and so forth. And, uh, and that's, that's why um, you know, Sage has been able to build a, 
a, a multi-billion pound uh, tech business uh, in the software field, uh, despite despite the existence of Californians. Um, the other uh, classic one for me that marks marks a, a defensive barrier against the Californians is uh, the postal system. And um, both Love Film and Greys, uh, more recently for me, have been good examples of how, where we can really build successful businesses because of our um, because of the need of, the, of each business to um, provide a service for its customers, which you can only really do through um, a service like the Royal Mail. And the Royal Mail doesn't provide that service globally. No business provides that business globally. The ne next closest equivalent to it in the couriers charge far, far more for an inferior service. And we, are, as a result of that, it's hard for a Californian business like Netflix to offer a UK service from California. And as a result of that, I mean, that dynamic obviously changes now that DVDs are, uh, are getting replaced by streaming services. But the, the, the existence of that um, DVD opportunity was what enabled us to build an opportunity now to defend ourselves against Netflix in, in the UK. And that, and that comes about fundamentally because the post is one of those things that makes the UK special. Uh, the Royal Mail is actually a very, very good provider by international standards. And that, that gave us the defenses we needed to build a, build a successful business. Um, and actually, while I'm on that theme, I suppose the other one example where I think about this is, is Zoopla, where actually Zoopla was not first to market from a global point of view. There were some very able Californians well ahead of us. Uh, uh, but um, the fact that the property market, again, varies by geography, and, and we have um, uh, we have the uh, land registry office uh, in England and Wales, for example, that um, operates in a very different way from how it operates in the U.S. That gives us that gives us some defences against the Californians and ensures that the markets for property uh, generally and and valuation data in particular uh, are very localised, national boundaries, and they. You know, the UK and Australia are the biggest markets outside America, and they operate very differently to um, America. Thank, thank goodness. Uh, so I'm I'm uh, I'm less focused now on how one buys American businesses, and more focused now on defends oneself against the onslaughts of the Californians. Um, uh, but even if one's identified a sector um, where, you know, for example, it's the post would be a critical factor, or it's, you're in property, or something where you can point to the differences between here and, and the California, how the Californians would look at it. You, you, that's still not enough. And in Love Film's case, for example, uh, when I first looked at that space, uh, which was back in 02, 2002, uh, there were four companies already, already in that market. There were four mom and pop shop types doing uh, DVD rental through the post. Uh, and I didn't really understand how I was going to beat them. Uh, and um, the uh, Zoopla, in fact, another good example, we launched Zoopla in 08, and we were number, I don't know, 12 to market or something. Uh, right Move right Move has all the network effects in that space, but it, there's a bunch of uh, wannabe Right Moves snapping around from prime location downwards. And um, we launched into, I think, I don't think we were even number 12, we were, I think we were number 19 or something when we launched. So uh, you've still, you're still not enough to have identified a sector that gives you defences against the Californians uh, and um, has some equipment in cricket and warm beer, but you, you, need, you need your MacGuffin. Hands up here who's heard of a MacGuffin. So not many Hitchcock fans in the audience. It's a, MacGuffin is a Hitchcock term. Uh, Hitchcock talks about all good films have a MacGuffin. Uh, and when you ask him what a MacGuffin is, he doesn't really want to tell you. Uh, so uh, I'm afraid I'm, I'm going to have to use allegories to explain what I mean by MacGuffin. But uh, really what I mean by MacGuffin is you, you need some... You need some magic ingredient that gives you an ability to gum as Zoopla has from number 19 to number two at the moment. And you know, watch this space right move. We'll be uh, we're after you. Uh, and in Love Film's case, of course, we were able to overtake our the, further, the first four guys. Well, in fact, we bought two of them. But anyway, that was a, that was one way of doing it. Uh, uh, but we we um, we needed a, we needed a way of doing that. Um, so sort of how do, how does one do that? And um, in Love Film's case, actually, the, the, the sort of magic ingredient came about um, through my business partner who managed to negotiate. This was before we had a team, before we had money, before we had a brand, before we had anything. Uh, my business partner negotiated an exclusive distribution deal to put um, flyers in DVD players uh, that was being sold across the UK over an exclusive period. And it was with a supplier that had a th one third market share of all DVD players sold in the UK. So there were going to be 2 million DVD players per year for two years sold with our flyers in it out of a total of 6 million a year. And that, when you actually did the maths, at least as optimistically as 
certainly the way my business partner was looking at it, uh, we were going to break even from that deal alone in year one. So we were gonna, that was going to catapult us past the existing four players. And that story, that agreement, legal agreement, uh, commercial, dis- commercial agreement, exclusive arrangement, enabled us to raise more money than any of the other four people had. Uh, it enabled us to hire a better team than anybody else had. Uh, and actually, by the time it became clear to us uh, that, the, that the container ships with these DVD players coming over from China hadn't got lost at sea, uh, and that, in fact, yes, our flyers had got put in the DVD players and they hadn't, gone, they hadn't got lost at source. And yes, these DVD players were being bought in the shops. But despite all that, nobody was signing up through this system. Uh, the, uh, it didn't really matter because we had, at that point we had more money than anybody else. We had a better team than anybody else. We had better technology than anybody else. And actually, by that point, our MacGuffin, if you like, had shifted into being the lowest cost provider. We had the best technology. We still do have the best, at least from a fulfillment point of view, we have the best technology in the world on, on, for that space. We're well ahead of Netflix and Amazon. And um, we include Amazon these days, so I must get used to that. Anyway, uh, but um, the, uh, we were, we, by that point, we had, a, we had a different MacGuffin, which was the technology platform that we'd been able to build from scratch, including actually quite a lot of former Amazon um, alums who, who helped us do that. Um, and um, but no, that, that, that ingredient early on, the, the, the agreement we had uh, uh, with a provider called Box Media was, in, was absolutely crucial to us um, lifting ourselves above the crowd and, and, and uh, getting past those first four players. Um, the, uh, in Zoopla's case, the MacGuffin, if, uh, if you like, early on was, was launching them into the market with a free um, automa- automated valuation um, tool that lets anybody value any residential property in the UK for free instant- instantaneously uh, and none of the other players had that and of course everybody in this country talks about property uh, I think I think they probably think about it more than they think about sex if you read some of the surveys the way I do but you you know it's it's absolutely crucial USP that to have your um, to have the to, to, to be able to let people value their mother-in-law's property f- for free uh, online while they're at work and that um, that you, that was what drove traffic to our site, and actually, uh, our business plan um, in the early days, quite frankly, was um, uh, smoke and mirrors. But the um, by the time we had all that traffic, we were able to to parley our way into a proper business plan. We acquired a Property Finder, which gave us a lot of assets that were very helpful to us, and um, from there, we've really been able to represent a proper challenge to um, right move. And if we get our way and are able to merge, as we hope with the uh, prime location business owned by the Daily Mail, then we really will, will be a proper challenger uh, up against one of the, one of the strongest uh, tech businesses that's been created in the UK. So that, that MacGuffin of, of an evaluation algorithm um, actually remains, remains to this day very important to us. It's a big part of what makes the site special. Uh, it's, not, it's not the only thing anymore, but it is, it is a big differentiator for us. Uh, and the algorithm for that is absolutely proprietary to us and was developed by one of the, I think, I think Certainly, given my experience at McKinsey and Forrester, uh, I think I can fairly say there's one of the smartest uh, statistical teams in the world, and and that that algorithm is you know is proprietary to us. We're out of San Francisco, and uh, and is, is absolutely crucial MacGuffin for our for our successes. And more recently, um, Secret Escapes has been a wonderful example of this too. Where Secret Escapes has launched it launched actually almost exactly a year ago, and is a um, members only luxury travel club uh, for UK people uh, online and the we were launching to a very crowded space with Groupon and Jet Seto and Voyage Privé and all sorts of people around but you know we've been able to come on to, to, to create the leading UK position in that space and we've done that because we kicked off with we spun it out of another business and we were able to uh, we were able to kick it off with nearly a million members uh, who we'd um, who we'd essentially soft opted into the system and it gave us the leverage to go and secure these incredible deals with luxury travel providers and you know actually the members had already signed up for travel deals but they were being offered by our previous business uh, publicly available deals so we were able to go to the members and say it's got even better than this we're offering you members only deals now even better and we were able to go to the hotels and say by because we're turning this into a private club we uh, we expect you to give us deals that you know you would be too embarrassed to see publicly available online the whole thing worked beautifully and the business has kicked off amazingly well and again, I think that that MacGuffin of sort of we, what's special about us is, is we've got we've kick off with a million members that's four times bigger than the next biggest player has enabled us to again hire a great team, raise raise a decent amount of money, and 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 hit the ground running. Um, 
and uh, I won't bore you all with the intricacies of hedge funds, but my, my sort of day job these days at Oxalist, where we're building an internet-driven hedge fund, again, we're trying to use that same thinking around what makes us special, and, and it comes down to trying to combine uh, internet technologies in the in, into into the world of hedge funds, which which hasn't happened before in a credible way, and, and again, actually is really unlikely to happen in California, because they have hardly any hedge funds in California, thank goodness, and they have hardly any internet businesses in New York. So the, the sort of natural place for that to happen is, uh, is I think, in London, and we've been able to rec recruit a team, I think, much more easily in London uh, to do that than we would have been able to stateside. Um, so that's a bit of a whistle-stop tour. I think I've hopefully been able to give you a bit of a, a flavor here for um, you know how I'm, 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 I'm not trying to build the next uh, Google, Amazon, eBay, Facebook. Uh, I don't think I would stand a chance. I think I, ra I rate those businesses. Think that the uh, th th they're set up in the right place, and that's for a reason. Uh, the um, actually the other example I haven't given all that front is um, Betfair, which deserves mention, um, not for all the uh, self-inflicted woes it's inflicted upon itself in the last twelve months, but for the fact it, it too is one of the most successful tech um, to startups based over here, and, and of course. It was actually set up by Americans who, uh, well, no, that's not quite true, sorry, uh, but part of that business was set up by Americans who wanted to set up in America, but it was, it, it was illegal to, to build such a business in America, so they came here. And uh, the betting, the, the big online betting business, the successful ones, um, are all based in Europe, These or the legal ones, sorry, are all based in, uh, in Europe. And uh, there's a good reason for that, which is that America's outlawed them. Uh, and, uh, and they've now got themselves into a position where actually even if America deregulates, which is looking more and more likely, uh, the, uh, the European businesses are, are going to give the Californians a very good run for their money because they've got the scale, they've got the technology, they've got the brand names now, and um, the, uh, you know, the, the Californians are, are going to be pushing water uphill themselves on that, on that particular space if they, uh, if they choose to enter the market legally. So um, I've, I've covered, I hope, I hope most, of the, most of the points I wanted to get across. I've got... A couple of minutes for any questions, otherwise I'm going to hand back to the chair. In fairness, I think the teams that I think of as the teams I've been luckiest to work with haven't necessarily cost a lot of money. Um, that being said, I had a meeting this morning where the team that was being proposed have all got an astonishing experience and the combined the combined salaries of that team is going to be a million and a half pounds and you know but we actually had a very animated discussion this morning about is that right uh the as big a team and a very successful one one of one of the businesses i'm lucky enough to work with uh the combined payroll on day one the salary of that team was um about three hundred and fifty thousand pounds so and seven people so it um, really uh, doesn't necessarily cost a lot of money, but um, I am I am generally always, I'm 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 always chasing the money. I'm always trying to bring in. I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not leaving revenue for manana manana for you know the time when some dozy American buys this business. I'm trying to get the revenue now, uh, so I'm trying to make things cash generative. And you're generally looking at each person on the basis of are they going to bring in are they going to bring in the money that, that pays for them. Um, in tech businesses, you're often able to throw skill and talent at a problem rather than experience. And skill and talent costs, you know, I'm put, putting plucking numbers out here, thirty to fifty thousand pounds rather than double or triple that. Uh, you are often able to put equity on the table uh, instead of cash. Um, at Love Film, I was very fortunate in that the um, one of the very best guys I had was our tech guy, who's now at Zupa actually, uh, had left Amazon uh, re earlier, but had actually made quite a bit of money out of at Amazon out of his stock options, and so he his immediate salary needs were not high, and we were able to do a deal with him on that basis. Um, another key hire of mine was a fairly junior person at Amazon whose salary expectations were not high, and who. Um, proved fantastic for us, but you know, I think her CV was relatively junior. But I knew that the experience she'd have got in an organisation like that was great, and I had a great recommendation from a very senior guy who I couldn't afford. Um, so I, th I think I'm not. I haven't generally had to pay too much. There in the hedge fund world, all bets are off. That's terrifying, and one of the difficulties there is the whole uh, funding dynamics and payroll dynamics are, are just eye-watering in comparison with what you can do in more tech-driven businesses. Uh, 
I think there's no question that the cost of capital is cheaper in California, by which I mean there's more of it and, it, and it's easier to raise. Um, but my experience is, I, 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 don't think, I don't think that the Californians have a necessarily a higher hit rate than here. I think that, I th if anything, I actually think the hit rate might be higher here. Because I think that people, I, I think the lower cost of capital there means people are more prepared to back businesses which haven't got a chance. Uh, and I think here, if you just, you know, a pre-revenue business, as they always think of themselves, thinks, oh, it's frightfully difficult to raise money. What the investors are always thinking is, this thing's not a business. Uh, and I think here, if you have a plan which shows you're building a real business, especially if you talk about words like profit and break even, which a frightening amount of people don't, um, I th don't think it's impossible to get money, especially in London. Um, there, is, there is money. The tax breaks around EIS are actually quite favorable. Um, better and better known. Uh, the um, VCT funds do a bit of decent job of popularizing that. You've got uh, the, the American venture firms who, you know, everybody knows. You've got the um, you've got an increasing number of angels out there. So I th my my take is the guys who moan about it's impossible to get money. What they're really saying is I couldn't find anybody stupid enough. Uh, and I think that the uh, I think that the best plans do get money here, and they don't spend 50 million. They'll spend five. Um, and that's actually part of why I say, actually, if, you, if you're in one of those sorts of businesses where you're up against a Californian who's got 50, then that's not helpful. You, you know, that's one of the reasons why the Californians are likely to beat you. But um, you shouldn't need to spend the 50. I mean, again, Californians raise too much money and spend, too, spend it too much. Netflix spent something like $300 million getting to break even. Uh, Love Film, even though, believe me, there are plenty of mistakes along that way and we raised too much money. Even though we raised much more than we actually really needed, we still only raised we raised less than fifty million dollars. Uh, so, uh, and our platform was better than Netflix's on certainly on the uh, many counts, and not not uh, not all of them, and not necessarily. To be fair to Netflix, they obviously were big, became a bigger became a web, bigger website with costs associated with it. But I don't feel that the climate of fundraising is all doom and gloom here. Certainly not relative to other European countries. I think I think if you're in London. You know, it can be done. You just need to focus on building a successful business and show people that you have a plan to do that soon, rather than you know uh, when you've got lots of users and you know. Uh, but before, but but right now you haven't worked out how you're ever going to get money out of them. That's probably it for me on time. I'll be around later on if people have got further questions. Thanks everybody for their attention. Cheers.